Hello everyone and welcome to the second series of the data project from Rotten Tomatoes. Let's take a look at the assignment first. The assignment is to build a high performance classification algorithm to predict whether a particular movie on Rotten Tomatoes is labeled as Rotten Fresh or Certified Fresh. We're provided with two data sets in this problem. In the previous video, we solely uh, focused on the Rotten Tomatoes movie CSV file. And if you did not watch those videos, check them out. The links are in the description box. In the second approach, we will use both the data sets by merging them. So in the second approach, we aim to predict the movie's status based on review sentiment. We will conduct sentiment analysis to predict movie status using the overall sentiment of the review. If the review sentiment is negative, the movie can be classified as rotten, otherwise it's fresh. But before we do that, we need to prepare our dataset for this. In this approach, we will work with text data, which is reviews, as input, instead of numerical and categorical features like we did in the previous series. We will continue to use the random forest model for this task. So let's first examine our data. So we're using both the CSV files and we're reading it. And let's use the head method to check it out. So now that we've checked out the table, let's get started. In this table, we have the review content variable as the input data for our model and review type as the target for prediction. However, our dataset does not contain the movie names for their corresponding status. So we can use a Rotten Tomatoes link variable to merge this dataset with the previous one containing the movie title and tomato meter status. So this code merges the critics table with the movie table based on the Rotten Tomatoes link column as the key and the resulting merged table contains columns like Rotten Tomatoes link, movie title, review content, review type, and tomato meter status. Now let's review the merge table using the head method. And there you go. So this is a, just a review of the table. We will need to filter out missing values in the review content column since we cannot work with empty reviews, right? So let's go on and filter out the missing values and visualize the distribution of review type. So we drop the missing values of the review content column, and then we plot a bar chart to visualize the distribution of review type values. Let's run that. All right. As you can see, the output shows that we have an imbalanced distribution between our labels, fresh and rotten, which means that we will need to add class weight information, which will prove beneficial during our training process. OK, also, we have more than 100,000 entries in our data. But for this example, we will use only a small fraction of them, i.e. 5000 entries to speed up the training process. So let's do that. All right, so let's pick only 5000 entries. OK, from the original data set. Next, we will encode our labels from their string representation, which is rotten or fresh into integer representation. That is zero for rotten and one for fresh. OK, we're doing this using ordinal encoding and then we're building a data frame called feature critics containing the encoded labels and the review content column. OK. And we're using the head method to preview the critics table. And this is how it looks. OK, so we've converted rotten and fresh, as we did over here in review type, into ones and zeros. OK, as a final step of this section, we will split the data set into a train set and a test set. All right, here's a code for that. Now, in the data frame, we have each review is represented as a string, which is a collection of words. We need to convert these strings into a format that can be used by a machine learning algorithm. This process is known as tokenization in natural language processing or NLP. 
Here's where we transform text or words into n-dimensional vectors and then use these vector representations as training data for our machine learning algorithm. To achieve this, we will convert the text reviews into a matrix of token counts. For example, consider these two reviews, okay? First, this movie is a good movie. And second review is the movie is bad. The algorithm will create a dictionary uh, from these examples containing unique words such as this movie is a good, the, bad, okay? Then it will count the occurrences of each word in the dictionary based on the input text. For the input, this movie is a good movie, we will get a vector of 1, 2, 1, 1, 1, 0, 0. And lastly, we will use the generated vector as input data for our random forest model. This method can be easily implemented with scikit-learn, specifically with the count vectorizer class. After vectorizing our text, we train our random forest classifier, okay? Let's do this process step by step. First, we will initialize the vector class, which will be used to transform our text data into vectors. Then we will transform the text data in Xtrain into a matrix of token counts stored in Xtrain vec. After that, we initialize the random force classifier and train it on Xtrain vec and Ytrain. In the next step, we make predictions on the transformed text data, which is Xtext, and print the classification report. This is to evaluate the model's performance. And finally, we plot the confusion matrix as always to visualize the performance of our random forest model. Okay, and let's run that. Here's our output. So our accuracy of 69. And here is our confusion matrix. So as you can see, the performance is not very impressive, but this is somewhat expected since we're only working with 5,000 entries as opposed to the full 100,000 entries, right? We can try to improve the performance of our model by including class weights because our labels are quite imbalanced. In the following code, we calculate the class weight for our imbalanced data set using the compute class weight function from scikit-learn. Finally, we create a dictionary mapping class indices to their respective weights. And then we print out the result. Here's the output. Now we train the vectorized text data with our random forest classifier. This time we incorporate the class weight information. In the following code, we first instantiate the count vectorizer class, and then we transform the text data into vectors uh, like we did before and we call that extrain back and then we initialize the random forest classifier with the class weight okay and we train it on the vectorized training data next we make predictions on the transformed data x test and print the classification report and finally print the confusion or plot the confusion matrix to visualize the performance of our weighted random forest model. That's the code and let's run that. And here we have it. In the output, we can see that the overall accuracy of our model with the inclusion of class weights is slightly better than the one without class weights. Moreover, since the weight of class zero, rotten, is higher than class one, fresh, the model now performs better in predicting movie reviews classified as rotten, but worse in predicting movie reviews classified as fresh. This is because the model gives more importance to the data classified as rotten. All right, that is it for this video. We have pre-processed the data and implemented default and weighted random forest classifier methods to improve our model's performance. In the next and final video of this series, we will use our model to make predictions on movie status. So stick around for that and see you there. Thank <laughs> you.